As far as I'm concerned, the election is irrelevant. There's very little difference in any of these guys. None of them understands the problem. These guys are the guys who got us into trouble. You expect them to get us out? It goes back here. Don't look to Washington to solve your problem. Look here to solve your problem. Now, I believe there's a little more difference than Jim alludes to. In fact, a lot more difference. I mean, one had a stepdad named Lolo, a grandma named Toto, and a pet monkey named Tata or something like that. And he was taken to see the demon-fighting monkey gods over the 4th of July picnics growing up. But I do agree that either way, a storm is going to hit. But I am optimistic because I do believe God is not neutral and I do believe that um, Romney will listen to the promptings of the Spirit. I really believe that. And it will be God that will make the next Abraham Lincoln, not man. I also believe that we're going to be okay because of the steps we've taken to prepare. I know who you are. I've stored up extra food. I've moved closer to like-minded people. I have, you know, educated my family. I have guns. I've got gold, whatever. But a lot of people have done that. A lot of people are so far ahead of me. It's, it's aggravating, quite honestly. There's enough of Americans that will do the same. Be a lifeboat for others. So even if there is a storm, we'll be ready for it. That's where my optimism becomes realism. It doesn't come from the thought that Mitt Romney is going to ride in on a white horse or maybe drive in one of his wife's white Cadillacs and save the day and stop the storm. The storm is coming. But I feel a little like Noah. We make it. Tomorrow's not going to be pain-free. Things are going to be very, very different. We're used to having things a certain way. A new study shows that Americans toss out as much as 40% of our food, 20 pounds per person per month. Wow. That happens because we're spoiled. I, I, I tell my kids every day, finish your dinner, or I'm going to start doing what Grandma and Grandpa used to do. They used to put the plate above the refrigerator, and I'd eat whatever I left. I'd eat that the next morning for breakfast. You finish your food. We're used to fully stocked grocery stores and hundreds of restaurants to choose from and having the money to go just a couple of miles from our home and get anything. Think of how ridiculous we are with food. I mean, I'll go 10 minutes without eating and I'll be trolling around the kitchen and opening up the refrigerator. I'm hungry. With an exception of Adam and Eve, no man or woman in human history has had it as easier access to food than we do right now. We've also, we're also so high on technological heroin. We're spoiled rotten by an instant gratification culture, drunk on fame. We're now, half of us, addicted to free stuff from the government. 46 million people are now on food stamps. When the program started in the 1970s, one in 50 Americans were on food stamps. Today, it's one in seven. And, and and that's not bad if people need it, but there is, there are a lot of people that don't. And there's no shame involved in taking a little more than you need. Just like any heroin addict who tries to quit or has it taken from them, a spoiled brat who gets denied. I'm an alcoholic, I know. Coming off of these vices will be painful, and if you just stop them, it's even more painful. A lot of people who just stop whatever they're addicted to become violent. Is your state, is your neighborhood in a position to survive the withdrawal? Does your state have any assets in gold? Do they? What, what are your state's assets in, and where are they? Have they done like the University of Texas did? Get it out of the basement of the Fed and move it to the state. What good is it going to be if, 
if the Fed is bailing out the rest of the world and on the hook for stuff, and you don't, your people, your state doesn't have the actual access to gold, why don't you move it to your state? Does your state have any resources? They have anything in storage? Or are they just going to beg for Obama cash? Are they just continually buying into the lie that we all know? If there is a disruptive um, day or two or week in food or, or the banking supply, if the banking system came to a grinding halt, would your state be able to provide any supply of food? Most likely not. California has been writing IOUs to its uh, citizens for their tax returns. Good luck if you, if you think California is covered with, for an emergency. But how about your neighbors? Are they thinking like you? The question this hopefully leads you to is, am I living in the right place? There's a survey that came out yesterday, and people talked about it on radio and television, but I don't think they talked about it in the right way. It's a way for you, honestly, to discover the answer of, am, am I in the right place? This is a map of the most charitable states in the um, Union. Charitable states in red versus the least charitable states in blue. Look at this. The top most charitable states voted for McCain in 2008. The seven least charitable states all voted for Obama. You may also notice that the more charitable states are also the states that tend to be more religious states. Not a coincidence. And in difficult times, you will also see a stark contrast. Let me ask you. These states here, these states here, and I contend actually it's more like this. It's the Mountain West and the South. And this is in real trouble. So is this. Although Washington and Oregon have more farmers, um, so they, it might not be so bad. But where would you rather be? Where do you think neighbors will take care of neighbors? Do you think it's going to be in the Northeast? The people living in those states whose sole idea of charity is paying taxes, they will turn to the government for help, and when the government won't help them or can't help them, they get mad. When there's not enough handouts for everyone, they turn against each other. Well, it's because you had too much, because you did this, because you did that, and they tear each other apart. They haven't prepared themselves to be truly self-reliant because they don't, they don't depend on each other anymore. They don't have the faith that teaches them how to walk that way which leaves people hopeless. I will tell you that the crash of 08, I toured the country, all over the country, and the place that was the most fearful, I traveled east coast, west coast, south, everywhere, was this belt. And the farther up north I got into New England, the more frightened they were and the more hopeless they were. The farther down south I got, or in the mountain west, they knew they would be okay. If you have no hope, it's incredibly dangerous. The people in those states do have faith. They do believe God will protect them. They see the end of the light at the end of the tunnel. They are filled with hope. And they have prepared themselves to be a lifeboat for others. They will care for one another. And let me give you a perfect example. I want to talk to you about a story that we are working on um, at the blaze. We're working on a story um, on the drought. And this weekend, I was traveling around. I went to the um, Native American um, uh, Navajo uh, Nation. And I saw great despair. And we started talking about the despair uh, with the farmers and the drought. And one of the guys who was with me, Mark Mabry, he said, uh, I've got to go I've got to go cover this, and, you know, we, we kicked angles around, and I said, you know, I don't want to see the despair. I want to see the hope. Well, he wrote to me last night and said, Glenn, I'm in Kansas, and boy, have I found, have I found a great story. Farmers recently gathered in Kansas at a summit where they talked about what's happening to them. The drought is the worst in half a century. Water is extraordinarily scarce. Now, in Kansas, here's how it's set, it's set up. There are senior farmers and junior farmers. I don't know the difference, but that's the way it's set up. 
Senior farmers have direct access to the irrigation system, and they take what they want and they need first. And the junior farmers, they just get whatever is left. Now, usually there's enough for everybody, but if there's not, the junior farmers have to take less. Well, this year, there's not even enough for the senior farmers. There's not enough water to, to bring in a full crop for the senior farmers. And so in some states, you would think that those senior farmers would just say, well, I got to have it. But here's what they've done. Without any kind of regulation, without any stimulus from Obama, the senior farmers, because they're themselves leaders, along with the junior farmers, the neighbors, the senior farmers have decided to give the junior farmers enough water to get a crop in. They're getting very little profits because of the reduced water supply. This agreement means they're going to get even less. But they're neighbors. And they know they're all in trouble now. And one way or another, they all have to hang on to each other because they're all in this together. A president can propose all kinds of programs that he wants, but they really never will work in the end because they don't truly bring hope. They don't inspire. A, gov a government can't mandate that America is going to be great. Regulations and rules that force people to do things or else get arrested, those things don't make us the shining city on the hill. All eyes, the eyes of the world are upon us. We're about to have either our most humiliating failure or our most spectacular day. It's people like these farmers in Kansas who are willing to help others. They're competitors. Even though it means that they're, they or they, their family, their farm, their neighborhood will, will suffer personal loss, they sacrifice because they want to. That gives me hope. Because they are the kind of people that make America great. They are the reason I have optimism. Because I know a better tomorrow is around the corner. And it isn't pain free. But I also know there are millions of people just like these farmers that will get us through whatever it is we need as friends, as family, as neighbors, and fellow countrymen.